Well, hello everybody, I'm Pastor Gil Zaragoza and welcome to At Home with Pastor Gil Zaragoza where Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father and unto Him be the honor and the glory forever and ever and all of God's people shout a good hearty amen, 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 and amen, and amen. Praise God Almighty. Well, let's pray. Let's believe God together. We're talking about how faith comes. So let's join our faith together and let's believe God for a very powerful video podcast in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray and let's believe God together in Jesus' name. Father in heaven, we declare your glory in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcome into this video podcast. Have your will and have your way and come and teach us the word today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We submit ourselves to you. We are yours to command. We flow with you in this video podcast today. And I pray for the audience that is watching right now. Give them open ears to hear your word and a receptive heart to receive your word. And we'll be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for everything that is going to be accomplished here in this video podcast. In Jesus' mighty name, and everyone shout a good hearty amen and amen and amen and amen. Praise God Almighty. Well, again, we are talking about how faith comes, and we are using... Uh, for our scriptural texts, uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 17, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, and Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Romans chapter 10, verse 17, the, the Holy Spirit inspires the Apostle Paul to write the following to the church in Rome. Romans chapter 10, verse 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Again, Romans chapter 10, verse 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says this, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Again, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Again, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, when we last left you, uh, we left off with uh, St. John chapter 20, verses 19 and 20, and then verses 24 through 29, which talked about Thomas's faith, in which he said, I will not believe until I see. In fact, just real quick, the scripture in St. John chapter, let's go ahead and consider uh, John chapter 20 verses 19 and 20, and then verses 24 through 29. It reads as follows, Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he, Jesus, had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Verse 24, But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them, then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Thomas, reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. Now let's go to Romans chapter 4, 
verses 16 through 21, for the honor and glory of the Lord. This is the Apostle Paul giving a biography of the faith of Abraham to the church in Rome. And the scripture reads as follows for the honor and glory of the Lord. This is, this is uh, verses 16 through 21, in which Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, is writing a biography of Abraham's faith to the church in Rome. And so the Holy Ghost inspires the Apostle Paul to write the following for the honor and glory of the Lord. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope. Now another translation says it this way. Who against natural hope believed in supernatural hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform. Now, we compare Thomas's faith with Abraham's faith. Thomas said, I won't believe that Jesus is alive until I see him for myself and touch the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side. I won't believe it until I see it. And Jesus said to Thomas, when he finally saw Jesus and said, my Lord and my God, Jesus replied, because you have seen me, Thomas, you've believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, yet they have believed. In Romans chapter 4, verses 16 through 21, it says that Abraham didn't consider his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Well, if he didn't consider his physical body or the womb of Sarah, what did he consider? He considered what God had told him, that he was going to be the father of many nations and that a son was to be born through Sarah and Abraham and his name was going to be known as Isaac. He considered the promise of I mean, he considered, let me say this, Abraham considered the promise of God. He didn't consider the physical circumstances. He considered the promise of God. And the Bible says, and this is where we're going to pick up today, Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. The writer of Hebrews wrote the following to the church in Jerusalem under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Romans chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him that appointed him, and also Moses was faithful in all his house. Who are we to consider when we're standing for a breakthrough or a turnaround or a miracle or an answer to prayer? We are to consider Jesus Christ, who happens to be the Word. John chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We are to consider the promises of God. We are to proclaim, according to, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, that the promises of God are yea and amen to them who believe. When you believe the promises of God, amen. Remember Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now in Hebrews chapter 4, the next chapter, in verse 14 of Hebrews chapter 4, it reads as follows. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Let us hold 
fast our profession. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith, our profession, our confession, what God has promised in His Word. We believe it, we receive it, we confess it, we hold on to that confession, and we act that the promise is real and it is already answered on our behalf in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now look at Hebrews chapter 12 for the honor and glory of the Lord. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Okay? Looking unto Jesus, considering Jesus, holding fast to what Jesus has promised in his word. Another translation of, of Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14 says this, Let us hold fast to saying the same thing. Saying the same thing here on earth that the Word of God is saying. When we do this, then we are going to put Satan on the run. If there's anything that Satan is afraid of, is a believer who believes God's promises and holds fast to that promise by believing it, receiving it, saying it, and acting on it. This is what puts Satan on the run. Amen. Get your attention, watch this, I'm going to say this, get your attention focused on the right thing, on Jesus Christ and on His Word instead of the circumstance or the situation or the sickness and disease or the lack or the lack of peace. Amen. Consider Jesus Christ. Consider His Word. Consider His promises. Now, having said this, let's go to Proverbs chapter 4 for the honor and glory of the Lord. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20 through 22, for the honor and glory of the Lord. Look at what the writer of uh, Proverbs wrote under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. He wrote the following for the honor and glory of the Lord. My son... Attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Notice Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20 through 22 again. My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Okay? Now, this is meditating on the Word of God. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. In other words, God is not going to move on your behalf if you don't cooperate with His Word. What you need to do is to attend to God's Word, incline your ear onto His sayings, don't let those words depart from your eyes, keep those words in the midst of your heart. Why? Because they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. God cannot move on your behalf even if He wanted to, if you are not acting on His Word. And God gives us specific directions for taking His medicine. What is it? My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. In other words, keep your eyes and ears focused on what God's Word says. If God's word assures you that he heard you and that he's answered your prayer, then if that word doesn't depart from your eyes, then you are going to see yourself with the answer. When you see yourself with the answer based on the holy written word of God, this is when you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that your faith is solidly based on the word of God. Remember what Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty four. 24, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. You must believe you have your answer before you get it. And the bottom line is this. When it comes to believing 
receiving from God. Our minds need to be renewed with the Word of God. We need to feed on the Word of God. Again, Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20 through 22. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. In other words, when your thinking is right, then your believing will be right. And if your believing is right, then your speaking will be right. And if your speaking is right, then your acting will be right. And you will receive from God whatever you are trusting Him for. You see, it's wrong thinking, wrong believing, and wrong speaking that causes the faith of Christians to be shipwrecked. This is why God has given us His Word to get our thinking straightened out, so that we will not be ignorant and our believing will be accurate according to the Word of God. Now, our last scripture is in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 1 through 3, in which the writer of Hebrews wrote the following to the church in Jerusalem, the following under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, starting with verse 1 of Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. Let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he has said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Now, what does that mean, Pastor Gil? It means this. Israel heard the word of God as well as, as we did, as we're hearing it right now. But Israel did not mix the word with faith, and because of it, they didn't enter into God's rest. Every time we hear the promise of God, we should believe it, receive it, say it, and act on it. And when we do, we enter into His rest. In other words, quietly rest on God's Word regardless of natural evidence that would satisfy the physical senses. Real faith is built on the Word of God. I'm going to say that again. Real faith is built on the Word of God. I'm going to say it one more time. Real faith is built on the Word of God. We should meditate on God's Word consistently and dig deeply into it and feed upon it every opportunity that we have. Then God's Word will become a part of us just as natural food becomes a part of us naturally. Okay? What natural food is to the physical man, God's Word is to the spiritual man. I'm going to say that again. What natural food is to the physical man, God's Word is to the spiritual man. I'm going to say it one more time. What natural food is to the physical man, God's Word is to the spiritual man. So God's Word builds into our inner man, our spirit, the real us, confidence and assurance. Remember what the Bible says in Romans, 10, Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Can you shout a good amen? God bless you. God be with you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.